All right, you guys. Well, again, uh, we have three new products that we're talking about here at SIGGRAPH 2013. We are talking about our new LightWave 11.6 upgrade. We also have Nevron Motion and Chronosculpt, again, that you can buy here at the show or you can go online and you can see all these great show specials we have for LightWave 11.6, Chronosculpt, Nevron Motion, and you can even get our exclusive LightWave t-shirt at a discounted price as well. But of course, coming up next, we got Deuce the Magic Man Bennett. Uh, giving you guys a great overview of the Raycast node in Lightwave 11.6. Deuce, come on up here. Break a leg. Okay, one of the new things in Lightwave 11.6 is our Raycast node. This is building upon our uh, very flexible and very open node-based editing system that we have throughout Lightwave. We have it in our surfacing, we have it in our displacements, we have it in our motion. Lightwave is all about giving everyone from single user through large studio all the tools that you need in order to do a project from beginning to end, from concept to completion. So one of the things that usually drives animators kind of nuts is trying to get an object not to penetrate another object, especially if we're dealing with something like a car or fingers on a table, setting down a, a glass. So our Raycast node is actually going to give our objects the ability to sense the other objects around them. So very simply, I'm just gonna uh, throw a, a, a ground plane in here, and I'm going to plan ahead and give it some, uh, give it some segments. Let's go ahead and go here, create me a sphere. Now, this sphere, it's very easy for me to initially have this set on the ground. I know the ground was created at zero, my object was created at zero, I, there's, no, there's no thought in there. But if it wasn't, I can easily get interpenetrations. That's because they're like ghosts. I can easily push one object through another one. That's where this Raycast node comes into play. So I'm just going to easily do a simple animation across here. And I want to show you the simple setup for this. It's under Motion Options, added as a modifier, and it's called Nodal Motion. That opens my node editor for my motion channels. So I'm wanting to control my motion of this object. Pull up my Raycast geometry. That's the Raycast node that we're talking about here. My item's position, I want to use as the ray origin. So what that is, is that's where my ray is being fired from. I need to tell it to pay attention to where the ground plane is and use that intersection to control my position. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, the sphere is on the ground. Okay, yeah. Big deal, it's flat. But what if I decided to make this object, or make this ground plane, de deformed. Now all of a sudden it's reading that deformation right, right straight away. This doesn't also have to be still, it can be moving. I can have a, a displacement map, it can be an ocean, it can be bone deformation, I could make a boat, I could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is just that simple. And as you can see, the, the node itself is extremely, well, it itself is simple. I'm simple. I like being, I like simple. Simple is easy to use. Simple is, is uh, straightforward. All I'm doing is choosing where my ray is being fired from, what to pay attention to, and then what to do with it. So let's talk about how this can actually save us some time. There might be things that we wanted to do that would take a while to set up. And <clears throat> especially if we were setting this up by hand. And what that might be is that might be uh, when we're dealing with odd shapes and we want to have something in contact with an odd shape. Such as what I've got here is a camshaft and a cam pin or a cam rod. So I want this rod to pay attention 
to this camshaft. Again, motion. This is going to be nodal motion. Again, I get up my ray, my ray cast geometry node. Again, item position is the origin. I want to pay attention to the camshaft and I want its intersect to drive its position. So now, if I were to take this camshaft and rotate it, oh, well, I'm not on the cam. Not a problem. All I have to do is just move this to where a cam is, and now it's following that shape. So the ease that I had in setting up that one, all it is is just copy and paste. So I take my this rod, let's move it over. Let's put it on here, do a clone, pull this over to this one. You pick it, you pick it up. And I'm going to illustrate why here in a second. Bring this over to the next cam, clone it over to the next one. This one goes up high. This one goes up high. Clone it. And one more clone. And so now I have all of those following the cam. It copying the node setup that I did, and it's just locating the intersect point on the geometry that I told it to pay attention to. Now, you may have seen that I did a, a a move in order to get it to find the, 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 uh, the, the target that I wanted to. And let me illustrate why. One of the things that I know is I've had to do it personally, and that's to get a car to drive on a, on a different shape path. And in order to do that, it can get uh, a little difficult to keep the car aligned where you want it to. So here, I have a, uh, a curved path, and you might ask yourself, well, why is it not getting in from the top? As it's here on location, it's underneath the path just above it. It's because it's looking at, at its location and down. So if I were to grab this car and lift it, when my keyframe got above that, that's now where it's going to snap to it. So I keep it close. All I have to do is get it close, the node takes care of the rest. Get rid of that ghost. And so now we are traveling up my spiral path. All I have to do is just drive it close, the raycast node keeps me on the ground. I'm only doing position. It, it's keeping it in contact with the ground. So if I wanted to have it, you know, on this keyframe be a little bit back or a little bit forward. It's just finding where it is so that it can stay in contact. Now, this gives me a little bit of a segue into a new thing that's actually in 11.6, but we don't directly mention it straight away, but it will be shipping with it. And that is sometimes you get into doing some math and some nodes, especially like in this one. This one, uh, the car is actually reading the angle of the normal. Okay. Anyone who told you that you didn't have to know how to do math when you wanted to get into doing you know, visual effects, I'm sorry they kind of lied to you. Especially if you're a single man shop and you don't have the access to a, a, a team of TDs, you know, that, that are wearing glasses and, and pocket protectors, you know, uh, left my pocket protector in my backpack, I'm sorry. So anyway, what we've got is we want to have the ability to reuse things. Computers are supposed to be labor saving devices, not labor creating devices. So what I have is I had to do a little bit more of a setup on this, and that involves actually turning the normal into a heading pitch bank. What this is allowing me now to show you, well, this, this seems pretty straightforward. All I'm doing is I'm using the item position for the car. 
I'm feeding that to tell it where the origin of the ray is, and I'm feeding that intersection into the position. That's fine. Well, that's only going to give me straight up and down. It's not going to rock my car forward and back. That's where this comes in. This looks like a really big node. Well, it's, it is, but what it also is, is it's a compound node. We now have compound nodes in 11.6, so we can do a, a computation, a calculation that we want to do, that we want to have, that we want to save this over and over again. We can then drop this into our preset shelf and we have it forevermore. This particular one will ship with 11.6. And what this is doing is this is changing my normal hit into a heading pitch and bank so that that gives me back to my rotation for controlling my car as it goes across this plane. So you won't have to do the math for this scene or a similar scene because we've done the math for you and saved you that time and energy. Now, I say I like simple things. This next scene looks complicated, but when you really break it down as far as what it does, it starts to illustrate to you the power that this, um, that uh, we can gain with this simple raycast node. What we have here is something that, uh, similar to Oblivion. Uh, a lot of people uh, on some of the demo pods have made that comment. Now what we have here is we've got a droid that's, that's spinning around and it's burning everything that it sees with a laser. And what we wanted to have is everywhere that that laser hit on our, on our surface, we wanted burn, we wanted smoke, we wanted particles to grow. This looks like it should be really difficult to do, but if we break it down, it's probably one of the simpler that we have. Inside of this droid, if I go here to bounding box, there's a light f for, the, for, the, for the illumination and everything. There's also a null in there called gun. I know, we all excel at naming conventions. So what we've got is this particular null here is the secret to everything. It's the secret to where the, the particles and all are being born. Again, it's being controlled with, with motion and our raycast node. This is it. I'm using the item info node to read that gun. That gun is setting forward direction and world position. So, so long as it's pointing and in a world position, I know where my ray is being fired. That then in turn is driving the position is my origin and my forward is my direction. Again, the intersection with my terrain drives my position. And in addition, that particular also has the particles and the hypervoxels being born from it. So again, extremely simple node scene. We're not talking about heady math. We're just talking about thinking through it. I've got a, a null that's pointing in a direction. Wherever its ray hits, I want to have my particles emit. And that's the scene. That's that's how simple this particular thing can be. It's wonderful that this particular single node gives such power. Again, that's what Lightwave's whole underlying message is to be, is empowering. We're trying to empower everyone out there, everyone on the stream. If you have, an, if you have a vision, you have a design, you have a story to tell, we can give you the tools that allow you to tell that story and you don't, you don't have to invite over your stinky uncle who has the questionable bathing habits to do your math for you. You can do it here. You don't have to have the team of surface, ma surface makers painting and everything. You can do it all here. That's the whole point. That's the, that's the design of Lightwave. Now everything that we've shown here has been straight you know, straight rays. One ray, straight direction, either up, down, or along a laser path. I'm going to try to show you to taking that to the next level. And this is to actually drive deformation. 
So what I have is I have an odd-shaped egg here that's going to move through a tube. What I want is I want that egg to displace my geometry as if it were, say, a snake swallowing an egg. So I come to deformation. We've done all this other node stuff in the motion. This is now going into the deformation. So if I turn on my node system here, and again, I have another compound node. This compound node will ship with 11.6. We're calling it heat shrink, at least for the time being, because what we want to do is we want to read all of the normals of this tube and where it comes in contact with this egg. If it comes in contact with the egg, then we want to grow as this thing moves in and moves past and through the tube. So again, simple node, simple concept, made easy here. And again, this is just one level. <clears throat> we could, in addition, add a little bit of a displacement to the tube so that maybe it's an organic pulsating thing as, as my food item will say is passing through the gullet. We can also, as one helpful person in the audience, <laughs> is for doing muscles. So what we can do is as angles, as rays are being, you know, we can use to drive morphs. We can, we can hook this up anywhere. We can ch use this to change colors. We can use this to change specularities, to change diffuse. It's one node that's part of the entire node-based system and the node situation and the uh, solution inside of Lightwave. We still maintain the layered stuff for doing <clears throat> surfacing and the like, those quick one-offs. But our node editor is really getting powerful and the addition of this node, uh, this node, nodal motion and ray direction is certainly the next step in that, in that move. Now, <coughs> excuse me, what we, let me just uh, see one last thing here. So as we're talking about moving things around. This is a somewhat of a probe droid as it's moving across the ground. Again, this is a simple node motion, but what we're doing here is we're giving it an up and down move in addition. So we're adding to our position from our nodal motion. This compound is just giving us a sine wave to give us a little bit of a float as the, as the droid itself is moving across the ground. So it's not just use this and that's it. This is part uh, part of it. It can it can add to. It can subtract from. You can have it. You know, uh, any in any aspect and in any part. But I do want to point out one thing that might not have been made clear. When I choose which geometry that we're targeting, it doesn't have to be just one thing. A lot of people have asked me around on the side, around on the pods, okay, this is great, but I see that everything is going to a terrain object or to a you know, floor object. If we have multiple objects, if we have other things in the scene, I can tell the Raycast to pay attention to those as well. That is why this particular UI has an add all button. If I wanted to have this, this particular probe droid <coughs> you know, ray cast against the trees, you know, so it flies up and over the trees, then it's very simply, I just add them to it and it takes it, it into account. We don't have to be limited to just anything on one layer. We can use multiple things. Now, I have a demo I'm gonna try to show. I'm at least going to show it to you and illustrate what we're talking about because I think it's important. It's important for you to understand, you know, that we're really talking about no limitations here. With our instancing in Lightwave, we can drive, you know, many other things. I'm looking at across here and I'm looking at the people that are watching this and I'm hoping that there are enough people here that remember those little pin, pin toys, you know, where you could push your hand in it. They were, they were always out on a, a, a counter at the, at the shopping mall, you know, at the, at the mall you push your hand in. Of course, someone has to push their face into it, you know, and stick their tongue out. 
That's what we're actually re-simulating here using the Raycast node. We've generated a, an array of instanced pins. These are not real, they're using our instancing engine built into LiveWave. And it's, they're being fired again down to either contact the one meter plane or this face that's being pushed up through, through this array of pins. We used the we uh, actually used a compound node to create the, the array of pins because we wanted each pin to be individual. The instancing generator in Lightwave can generate me this array very quickly, but it would all be one. I couldn't have individual control, and that's what this is allowing me to do. This is allowing me that independent control over pins to be able to do this displacement trick. This has inspired me. I want to do that uh, X-Men, you know, creating the Statue of Liberty and everything from that uh, show. I, I believe I can do it now, straight in Lightwave. So, let's, uh, as we're getting a little bit short, let me recreate just a couple of things and maybe this will help, uh, you know, a few people who had asked, maybe they can see this. So I'm going ahead and create a ground plane and let's go ahead and create a cube and another cube sunk and another cube. And if I create that sphere again, so if I start from here and go through, so through there, through there, through there, so let's just make sure that our path intersects all of the cubes. So motion, nodal, raycast. So my item position is my origin, and I want you to pay attention to all of the cube objects as well as the ground plane and the intersect is position. Let's see here. because I didn't restart. One second. Very quick to get back to there. Modeler, ground, cube, cube, and cube. So we know that these are independent. Sphere. Moving from one side to the other. And I'm probably going to have to give it some, ha some height so that it sees the tops of those cubes. Nodal. Raycast. And tell it to listen to all of those objects. I already saw it snap. So there, to there, to there. So we don't have to have everything on one level. We don't have to have everything on one layer. And see, it's not going to probably see that one because I moved it. Yeah, there it is. And as it comes across. So we're not limited. The I'll open the floor now. You know, has, has this made someone out there think well what about what about this you didn't touch on so and so what what about any 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 comments any questions no so everyone's a master of race cast now yes we always talk about making it easier for the animator, making it easier for the user of Lightwave. There's a number of users actually on our, uh, on our team. So when you see things that come, that come up like this, you have to know, you have to know in your heart that it's because we're users. We ourselves are users. We have fought some of these things. And we're in a unique position to listen to the unsung people who 
fight things day in and day out, and we know we know what it's like. We've been there. I've I have done quite a number of vehicle animations, and just trying to get the tires to stay <laughs> on the top of the ground, not penetrate through the ground. I have forced myself to use so many flat terrains because I know it's easy. Now, you know, with the Raycast, I'll be able to give my stuff a little bit of that, little bit of that, you know, uh, roughness, the little bit of an angle, the little bit of a uh, realism, you know, adding that stuff back in. Because this is just a node that goes on top, it's part of it, you can drive just the wheels separate from the body of the car. So that can give you your suspension. You know, as the wheels are feeling the ground, your body is just floating along. Um, this one simple little node has opened so many possibilities of making other objects aware of their surroundings, make them aware of what I'm wanting them to do. So I just managed to tell them, and it just does it. It's a huge step forward and a huge uh, time saver for some of those really complicated uh, animations that would have been either impossible or I'd try to find some other way of faking it. Yes? You'd set that up actually in your node itself. So what you'd have is you'd want to have a switch. You'd want to have a switch node. So yeah, you could you could target something else, uh, like a null. You know, so zero would be, you know, raycast only, and one might be it off. And you just set it up as a math and just drive it with a with a slider. Sure, that's absolutely possible. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. I guess that's my cue your cue to get back Magic up. Magic Man, thank you again for the awesome demo on uh, Raycast Nodes. Do spin it, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So.